the gita 1 part 4 for the religion of the upanishads to be popularized was a hard task very little economy is there but tremendous altruism the upanishads had very little kingdom although they were discovered by kings that held all the royal power in their hands so the struggle began to be fiercer its culminating point came 2000 years after in buddhism the seed of buddhism is here in the ordinary struggle between the king and the priest and in the struggle all religion declined one wanted to sacrifice religion the other wanted to cling to the sacrifices to vedic gods etc buddhism broke the chains of the masses all castes and creeds alike became equal in a minute so the great religious ideas in india exist but have yet to be preached otherwise they do no good in every country it is the priest who is conservative for two reasons because it is his bread and because he can only move with the people all priests are not strong if the people say preach 2000 gods the priest will do it they are the servants of the congregation who pay them god does not pay them so blame yourself before blaming the priests you can only get the government and the religion and the priesthood you deserve and no better so the great struggle began in india and it comes to one of its culminating point in the gita when it was causing fear that all india was going to be broken up between the two groups there rose the man krishna and in the gita he tries to reconcile the ceremony and the philosophy of the priests and the people krishna is loved and worshiped in the same way as you do christ the difference is only in the age the hindus keep the birthday of krishna as you do christ's krishna lived 5000 years ago and his life is full of miracles some of them very similar to those in the life of christ the child was born in prison the father took him away and put him with the shepherds all children born that in that year were ordered to be killed he was killed that was his fate krishna was a married man there are thousands of books about him they do not interest me much the hindus are great in telling stories you see if the christian missionaries tell one story from their bible the hindus will produce 20 stories you say the whale swallowed jonah the hindus say someone swallowed an elephant since i was a child i have heard about krishna's life I take it for granted there must have been a man called Krishna and his Gita shows that his, he, he has left a wonderful book. I told you, you can understand the character of a man by analyzing the fables about him. The fables have the nature of decorations. You must find they are all polished and manipulated to fit into the character. For instance, take Buddha. The central idea is sacrifice. There are thousands of folklore, but in every case that sacrifice must have been kept up. There are thousands of stories about Lincoln, about some characteristic of that great man. You take all the fables and find the great idea and know that, there wa that that was the central character of the man. You find in Krishna that non-attachment is his central idea. He does not need anything. He does not want anything. He works for work's sake. Work for work's sake. Worship for worship's sake. Do good because it is good to be good. Ask no more. That must have been the character of the man. Otherwise, these fables could not be brought down to the one idea of non-attachment. The Gita is not his only sermon. He is the most rounded man I know of wonderfully developed equally in brain and heart and hand every moment of his is alive with activity either as a gentleman warrior minister or something else great as the gentleman as a scholar as a poet this all-rounded and wonderful activity and combination of brain and heart 
you see in the Gita and other books. Most wonderful heart, exquisite language and nothing can approach it anywhere. This tremendous activity of the man, the impression is still there. 5,000 years have passed and he has influenced millions and millions. Just think what an influence this man has over the whole world, whether you know it or not. My regard for him is for his perfect sanity. No cobwebs in that brain, no superstition. He knows the use of everything and when it is necessary to assign a place to each, he is there. Those that talk go everywhere, question about the mystery of the Vedas, etc. They do not know the truth. They are no better than frauds. There is a place in the Vedas even for superstition, for ignorance. The whole secret is to find out the proper place for everything. Then that heart. He is the first man way before Buddha to open the door of religion to every caste. That wonderful mind, that tremendously active life. Buddha's activity was on one plane, the plane of teaching. He could not keep his wife and children and become a teacher at the same time. Krishna preached in the midst of the battlefield. He who in the midst of intense activity finds himself in the greatest calmness and in the greatest peace finds intense activity. That is the greatest, yogi as well as the wisest man. It means nothing to this man, the flying of missiles about him. Calm and sedate, he goes on discussing the problems of life and death. Each one of the prophets is the best commentary on his own teaching. If you want to know what is meant by the doctrine of the New Testament, you go to Mr. So-and-so. But read again and again the four Gospels and try to understand their import in the light of the wonderful life of the Master as depicted there. The great men think and you and I also think. But there is a difference. We think and our bodies do not follow. Our actions do not harmonize with our thoughts. Our words have not the power of the words that become Vedas. Whatever they think must be accomplished. If they say, I do this, the body does it. Perfect obedience. This is the end. You can think yourself God in one minute, but you cannot be God. That is the difficulty. They become what they think. They will become only by degrees. You see, that was about Krishna and his time. In the next lecture, we will know more of his book.